What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Report. I'm your host, Paolo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, let's go with some WB news, some HBO updates. Uh, Green Lantern has been ordered for a full season. Now, if you understand what a pilot is, and I can point you to the direction of my man Jules to give you a further explanation of what a pilot is. Brian, I have an idea for a movie. That should be that should be Sabin L. Jackson's last movie, Jules. <laughs> I want to see what walking the earth look like. <laughs> anyway. Well, you already so, got a shot because you got him walking, not running. So. <laughs> we also have uh, Harry Potter gets his new writer. Brian, Brian, I, I can be honest and be transparent with this and say I never really got into that. This has never been really my thing. But I know it's very uh, popular show, I a uh, 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 movie, uh, and you. I've seen. Have you seen all of them? Seen all of them. Read all of them. Kids read all of them. Seen all of them. So yeah. Yeah. So you'll fill us in on that. And Andy Circus confirms Batman to shoot for early 2025. Early, I would say, will probably be February, March. Yep. So. Let's get into it. Green Lantern, Brian, full season order. Did they say a number of, of episodes or they just did. A full season? Okay. They did. So it's eight episodes. They committed to the series for the, for the full season. And they did something else, which I thought was conspicuous. So you know how, like, the Penguin in September is exclusive to Max, the streamer. They took Lanterns yeah. for the network. So that may explain why Lindelof and Chris Mundy were cool getting involved with this. This is on HBO proper. This is this will be on the streamer as well, but this is going to be on TV. So they are believers. I heard the difference between Max and HBO. HBO are the people that do the good stuff, apparently. Game of Thrones type stuff. Yes. Okay. It's the big leagues. Exactly. Not that the Penguin's so, not, because I think the Penguin's going to be great. But I think it's I think interesting so that like this basically was upgraded from its original plan to be a streaming only property to now being a prestige TV property, which explains you've got prestige TV people working on it. Yeah. Again, this is promising, but not surely guaranteeing any success because they've done bad stuff before. So it's not like, you know, but it certainly gives us some hope of quality right absolutely it's a, it, and like you know i've speculated part of the reason this is going to be mostly earthbound is to save money but this would certainly imply they are trying to make this an event they are trying to make this something expensive and i will say that you know it's very sort of it's very sort of um window dressing type uh comments but let me give you the two official taglines so one was from casey bloys who's the head of hbo we're elated to be reuniting with Chris Mundy and Damon Lindelof as they partner with Tom, meaning Tom King, for this fresh take on DC's Green Lantern. As part of James and Peter's vision for the DC Universe, this first new live action series will mark an exciting new era. So that's his way of saying, um, we want this on HBO. Like he's basically saying, we're claiming it. And then Gunn's statement in response, again, it's window dressing. We were thrilled to bring this seminal title to HBO with Chris Damon and Tom at the helm. John, meaning John Stewart and Hal, Hal Jordan are two of DC's most compelling characters. Lanterns brings them to life in an original detective story that is foundational to the unified DCU we are launching next summer with Superman. So going out of their way to also say that this show is critical to the centralized universe that they're creating. It is not off on its own in any way. So we're going to get a lot of world building in San Diego, right? Are you saying it's central? We're going to get a lot of Easter eggs and nuggets to sort of, sort of build our imagination as to what sh could be coming and what characters we will be seeing. It makes me curious and more curious about Nathan Fillion's role in Superman because he is a Green Lantern, but he is neither Hal nor John. He's got and a gardener, correct? Right. So if they're directly connected, I think that's interesting that the Lantern who's appearing in Superman is a third Lantern. But they're telling you 
this series is absolutely occurring in the same time frame and the same same universe in the same place as that movie. Mm-hmm. So just just kind of like one of those things I've kind of trying to square in my mind of what Fillion's role actually is in all this. Yeah. Interesting, interesting developments, man. It seems like this is uh, rolling rather quickly, Brian. Are they are there writers on this? Oh, we told we, no, yeah. So, Lind- so Lindelof, Lindelof, and Mundy and Tom King are writing it. Yes, yes, producing yes, yes. It. Mundy's the showrunner because he he's the he show ran Ozark. What we don't have yet is who's directing the actual episodes. We don't have that yet. We have that okay. in a minute on Harry Potter. We don't have that on on this. But you want the craziest Green Lantern thing that's been going around? Right. So there's a certain someone, a certain very A list star who recently signed a deal with to work with Warner Brothers after working for decades with Paramount. That would be you would take a guess who that might be? Who the biggest name at biggest name actor at Paramount might have been over the last 20, 25 years? Mr. Tom Cruise. <laughs> Oh, there is a rumor going around that part of his WB deal is that he's Hal Jordan. That is interesting, Brian. He's never, he's never, he never frontlined a TV show, but obviously we know that this is more than a TV show. This is HBO, and it's in theory he would there clearly there would be movie potential behind this. I, I guess I'd be surprised. <laughs> After all this and time, not, and, this is what he went and, for, and, but and, and not a bad one. But James, James Gunn, remember, also just dropping this whole like Hal is older. Hal is older. There I, you go, Brian. There you go. You so okay, let me. Let, so let's play out this this crazy fantasy for a second. Tom Cruise is Hal Jordan. If they announce that tomorrow, what is the broader reaction to this show? Is this show automatically a hit? No, but the expectation of uh, excitement and and anticipation is going to grow tremendously. And not that I have any fears this show would be goofy, but if if that's your writer's room and Tom Cruise is your lead, I mean, I kind of feel like you're going for it with this show, aren't you? <laughs> like, all in. I, I still yeah. think I'd be skeptical. I'd be very skeptical, but I, we're just playing this out for fun. Um, we just can't let Tom Cruise try to take you to space. You just can't. You know what I'm saying? You got to tell him the special, special CGI. CGI. No, I, I, I want to see, I want to see him try to actually deploy the rig. I want to see, I want to see his training for actually doing this. So. So, yeah. Um, Holy moly, though. That's, that's Green Lantern. Green Lantern is, 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 is setting itself up, Brian, for a lot of excitement. Given the fact that we got horribleness with Ryan Reynolds, again, thank you for doing what you did. Brian, Harry Potter. Yeah, you know, I just thought we don't talk about the Harry Potter IP, and it's not it's not our lead IP, but this was also, a, you know, again, Warner Brothers, HBO. They're remaking the movies um, into TV seasons. I think the, the, the grand plan is they want to do 10 seasons to capture the seven books as accurately as possible. Um, J.K. Rowling, controversy and all, is is the executive producer on this series. And she has, because of her unique rights to Harry Potter, she has what George Lucas used to have, which is she has final say over everything. So you don't get a writer, you don't get a director unless she says it okay. Mm -hmm. What I thought was interesting was the, the folks who did Succession, Nice little show that's won a lot of awards and just wrapped up. They're doing this show. So the director and the writer for this show are the succession people who already did that wow. for HBO. So I was like, when I saw this in conjunction with Green Lantern, I was like, wow. Like, they HBO's not messing around with their IP. We know how seriously they take Game of Thrones stuff already. They've elevated Lantern off of Max to make it a prestige show. And now they're doing the same with their Harry Potter show. Like they're, it's almost the complete pivot of, you know, Max the streamer, that's nice and good. We had our fun with that, didn't go so well. We're still about the TV and we're really good at making big time TV. And we see wizards and lanterns as central to continuing to make big time TV. That's what sort of just stood out to me in this announcement. So I don't know. It, 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 I would watch it anyway, because like I said, I'm, I'm generally a fan, but... It, it got me of like, oh, they, they, they are doing a much more elevated take of remaking these books. 
So when it finally arrives, Brian, uh, I know my wife is is into uh, the movies. I don't know if she really got into the books. She hasn't mentioned them, but she did definitely see the movies. There's going to be a lot of fans looking forward to seeing this, Brian, especially coming from where it's coming from and the people behind it, obviously, right? Uh, so they're recognizing that what Warner Brothers is recognizing is that we just can't have Game of Thrones be the, the thing that brings people to us. And I would say, like, if it is just Game of Thrones, that doesn't make me subscribe. But, like, if you're going, if the lineup now is like, hey, we got three, four seasons of Lanterns and that's competing in for an Emmy in drama and we've got you know, several seasons of, we got 10 seasons of Harry Potter, the definitive, you know, version. And now, and Penguin, maybe Penguin has another season or something like it. It's going to be on HBO the next time. It's not going to be on Max. Like, yeah, at some point you're like, I got to have that channel. Like if you yeah. care about IP, I have to have that channel in my lineup. Yeah. That, that's money I would gladly fork over. If, I, if there's like five, six, seven shows I have to see over the course of a year, absolutely. I, I would, I would, I would sign up, you know, sign up again. Yeah. Like I let my yeah. max subscription lapse, you know, so I'll bring it yeah. back for the penguin, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you that, but yeah. That was, yeah. <laughs> Brian, uh, early 2025. Yeah. Uh, we have a shot. We have a shoot for the Batman, Brian. Do you think is a response to the possible disappointment in the delay of the film? I do, actually. I, I think the timing of this is conspicuous coming right after rumors that it was canceled and then rumors they were going to shoot two and three together and James Gunn kind of saying there's not much to say. Yeah. So Andy Serkis, who of course is our Alfred, he was at a, uh, a superhero Comic Con and he said, quote, I know nothing about the movie other than I just found out we're likely to be starting filming early next year. Therefore, if you do the math, it would be a year and a half after that. So that would, he's saying they delayed the Batman to fall of 2026. He's saying Summer 2026. right on time, right on time okay. for shooting to make that okay. revised date. That's what he's saying. Okay. Then he okay. added, <laughs> quote, I know that Matt Reeves is working really hard on the script. Matt being Matt, the extraordinary filmmaker that he is, I can only assume it's going to be another brilliant script because I thought what he did with the first film was pretty amazing. Um, he didn't really reveal any plot details other than to say, well, there's a huge arc, which you, nah, I'm not giving away anything. <laughs> <In quotes. laughs> yeah, because there's nothing to really give away no. really right now. It's too not early yet. for any of that. And it should, the way they introduce what, what feelings and, and uh, I guess anticipation and excitement that we first had for the Batman was through the trailer. So I think they're going to save that for that moment because that trailer was a bar that if you can top that and, the, and the, the beauty of it is that with subsequent releases of trailers, the anticipation built more and more. So that's where I think uh, we're going to see more uh, of the Batman. There is, I mean, there quote unquote advanced trailer in this case is the penguin. I mean the penguin, as we've been told, picks up right after, which we can see in the trailer, but supposedly leads right in as well. So I think, you know, our assessment, our evaluation of where we are at the episode is episode ten it's ten episodes, right? I think it's ten I think it's ten. At the end so. of episode ten of the penguin, that's going to breed discussion about Batman part two. Like because I mean, that's why he's like, you know, he's hard at work on the script, hard at work on the script. Yes, but he already knows where he's generally going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. And I, so I think that show will be our clue as to, like, okay, is it Court of Owls? Is there something else that we're detouring? Like, that, you know, so I'm very excited to see that aspect of the Penguin, too. But this is credible, right? This is credible. This is from one of the, one of the leads himself. And so we can kind of safely say now, like, all right, with this project, yeah, they're going to be gearing up to shoot this. And they probably time. called him up and be like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're like to say we're canceled this to say we're making three like what like yeah. let's say something you know is we're gonna start early 2020 we don't know what calm day. people just, down just calm people yeah, down yeah 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 brian one thing i, I did notice the spot that you won't you mentioned about alfred i'm a bit disappointed in batman letting alfred get you, you, 
Because Batman is fit. He is the, the epitome of man. And you got Alfred spending a little bit too much on food. That, a, you a, know. a little too much. <laughs> I mean, we, I mean, that that's a... Not to bring in universes, but I thought we were, he's a couple happy meals away from getting, hey, 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 like that version of that. <laughs> <laughs> Word up, yo, because I've never seen Alfred this big before. Right. That's what I thought. I, I like rewound it just to like focus in. I was like, what? He's like balding with the hair on the side and he is portly, man. <laughs> I yeah, like, I was like, yo, Batman, you, you, you got to be, I know you want him around, but have you checking his blood pressure every day or something like that? Cause... Well, because <laughs> the other part too, that's like every, you know, we've seen like Alfred is more than just a butler in all the, you know, sometimes he's a drop, but like he does go out in the field and like, you, you know, and you have to have an Alfred that can credibly do something other than hand, you know, hand him a towel. Um, <laughs> so you know, it's like, that's why I'm a little hand bit him, odd choice. Have you know? chickens. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh snap hey Alfred I need my whole protein why are you taking protein <laughs> but yo um, but let us know in the conversation below what you guys think um, what Green Lantern seems to have to offer for the future not only of the show of the characters but of the DC universe uh harry potter i'm sure there's going to be a lot of excitement for that because that's isn't that's that's never like a one and done oh you did it and then, no, no no there's this there's always more to do there uh until they reach a star wars status <laughs> <laughs> well they kind of you know? did with like they did the fantastic beast movies and those kind of petered out pretty badly within three yeah. right so it's that classic expanded universe that's why they're retreating to let's just make the books in full which yeah. i think is perfectly reasonable because disney's doing that with percy jackson right you had two ill-fated movies and then they're like all mm -hmm. right let's get the writer of the books involved and let's actually make the books season by season i thought season one you know it's not for me it's target with younger audience but like it was very good my kid loves percy jackson she loved the show so and thought it was very accurate to the spirit of the books so tracy told me about it too he said it was really good I just having sat down and really taken him Giving it a chance, but perhaps one day I will. Well, I'm off next week, so perhaps I'll have me uh, take it again. And do that. <laughs> um, Brian, um, we're at almost at the 20 minute mark, but at some point, I want to talk about the acolyte, but I just want to wait till it's done. Because, like I said to you earlier before, Brian, this is like people going to see the room. They went to go see what horribleness people have witnessed in terms of performance and quality of work. It, it, yeah. They, it, people, are just going, people are just watching it to see how bad it gets. That's it. And it's just, it, it is a shame because we'll, get, we'll talk about it more in detail later in the show. But it, it, it's a shame because there are action sequences in episode five yeah. that are legit. Like if you can just... Honestly, I would tell people, just forget the rest of the show. Just pull up episode five and watch the, cl like, the clips of it and d ignore the dial. Ignore every word that's said. Just focus on the lightsaber choreography. Watch it on mute. <laughs> yeah, just focus on the lightsaber choreography. There'll be some really cool things that you see, and it's a shame that that's going to be washed out by just some criminal negligence in storytelling, in my opinion. I have a, a request from the audience. Watch it in Japanese dub to see if it's better. Like watch it with like if you don't understand what's going on to see if it's better in yeah. whatever language. Because understanding what's going on, it, it, it's all you see, all you see people do is shake. They do exactly what you're doing: shake their head. Yeah, like, and it's is, like even in episode five when the action is amidst the action. There are just dumbfounding moments and decisions and writing where you're just like, you can't be fans of this. You can't. Like, you just can't be fans of this. Like, I'm sorry. Like, and, and that's why I think all the discussion about the messaging misses the point. Like, I saw like Leslie Helens, you know, she's under fire for like some of the choices. I'm like, fine. Here's my other homework assignment. Take 
any actor you want in Hollywood, the ones you like the best, whatever their background is, and swap them into the roles you want them to have in this show, but have them read the script exactly as it's written and tell me the show's any better. I don't think it is. And that's why it's like, it's no. a fault is not, the fault is in, in, in the concepts, in the writer's room. It's not it, like that other stuff. Sure. We can have that debate about how appropriate it is or inappropriate it is. That's a different discussion, but this is my yeah. whole thing. We can have that discussion when this show is good enough to merit that discussion. Right now, it's yeah. like, I don't care who is in this show. It doesn't matter because the plot holes and the sloppiness and the juvenile level of some of these lines is just unacceptable. Yeah. But there are some cool moments in episode five. Not going to lie. There's yeah. some cool things yeah, going with the lightsaber yeah. there. There, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. But. It arrives at certain moments and then it's followed by like, what the hell just happened? Like, why did we, why did we switch to this? You know what I'm saying? Oh my god! Ah, but yeah, let us know in the comments below what you guys think of all this, and uh, we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report. The show goes on. Yeah!